Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and today I want to make a little experiment with this quite unique function generator. It is a digitally controlled analog function generator based on the venerable XR2206 analog function generator, which is sitting here. Um, I'll explain a few details of the circuit topology just in a minute, but uh, first of all, let me explain what it's about today. Um, as you might know, the XR2206 has two pins for adjusting or minimizing the distortion of the sign signal. And back in the days when the XR2206 came out in the late 70s, you only had the chance to adjust the distortion of the sign signal just by visually inspecting the shape of the sign signal on your oscilloscope. Because at that time nobody owned a spectrum analyzer or uh, there were no sound cards available to do this uh, with uh, PC software, etc. And what I want to try is to compare how good you can minimize the distortion just by, by eyesight, by visually inspecting and optimizing the sign shape on your oscilloscope screen, and then by minimizing it with the FFT function of a audio analyzer software for your PC card. Just to explain the concept of this function generator, in the time when only analog function generators were available, at least for the hobbyist's money, you, you had to put an extra frequency counter just to get uh, an, an exact frequency. But then, even then, you still had the problem that your analog function generator was drifting a little bit. Now here they made a totally different approach to the problem. There are two PLLs inside. The first PLL generates a square wave uh, in the range from, I think, uh, 1 kilohertz up to 26 megahertz. And this is then divided down. You can get the, the square wave here at the three BNC outputs, um, the, the uh, high frequency signal. Then it is divided by a factor of 10. This, this is the second BNC jack. And then it, it is divided again by a factor of 10. And um, there the range is then 10, 10 hertz up to 260 kilohertz. And this is the reference signal for the second PLL. And that one um, controls the frequency modulation input of the XR2206. So also the, the frequency from the XR2206 is PLL controlled by a second PLL, which is chained to the first PLL. And um, all the switching you also need, for example, you might know that the amplitude of the sine and the triangle output of the XR2206, they differ in amplitude. And um, they put an extra analog switch there to, with two adjustment uh, trimmers so that the, the peak amplitude of your sine and your triangle wave uh, can be adjusted to give the same height. Uh, so quite nice. The rest is standard. You have um, an offset voltage here with this little potentiometer. Uh, you have the range switch for the amplitude and then the fine regulation of the amplitude up to a maximum of 20 volts peak peak. And what's also quite nice, uh, although I usually hate any controls with push buttons, here they at least put an up and down button for each digit and not a, a single up and down button and then you have to have with another button select the, the digit. So it's relatively fast to change the frequency to your desired value. So uh, quite an interesting uh, design. I can show you the PCB of course with a custom programmed, it's not a microcontroller, it's a microprocessor still with 
with separate RAM and ROM, etc. And you also can see some modifications because as quite often with ELV circuits, uh, there are some afterthoughts and some corrections or bug fixes in uh, uh, one or two months uh, later. Um, so uh, let's now let's go just, um, as you can see, I've already connected this here at the AC output uh, to my external uh, sound card. And now let's go to our audio analyzer software on the PC and see what we can do. So uh, here we have the oscilloscope function of my, uh, the audio software that I use. It's the audio tester version 3.0 from a German engineer. Um, anyway, uh, the first thing you might notice here, this little dips or tips here on the, on the highest and lowest point of the waveform. That is typical of the XR2206 because the sign signal is generated from the triangle wave via some diode filtering. And uh, of course, the, these points are the point where the ramp from the triangle wave changes the slope from upwards to downwards. And this switching point always gives these little tips or dips, however you want to call them. And uh, well, this is the unadjusted uh, waveform, the unadjusted sine wave. So let's try what we can get best by eyeballing the shape. So as you know, there are, this is the second trim pot that I'm now adjusting, which is for the symmetry between the positive and the negative part of the waveform. And the lower part, the lower Part, the negative part still seems a bit uh, dissimilar to the positive waveform. So let's change a little bit the amplitude. Because as you can see, during adjusting also the, the amplitude changes. So, so this is the worst <laughs> until now. So this is more symmetrical. And this is in the other direction. So I think here the symmetry is the best, but this still is not a really perfect sine wave from memory. And I would say that looks much too much like a triangle. And perhaps this is the best compromise. Uh, again, back to the symmetry trimmer. Yeah, I would say around this. It's really difficult, as you can see, judging the shape just visually is not so easy because it basically all looks like a sine wave. So let, let's leave it at this point. Uh, stop this and now go to the, the spectrum analyzer and see what we get. And the first thing uh, you might notice is here is the one kilohertz fundamental wave. And to the left and to the right, there are some extra lines with multiples of 50 hertz. Um, and this is clearly an FM modulated signal. So somehow um, the 50 hertz line frequency creeps either into the PLL or 
uh, directly into the frequency modulation input. Uh, so obviously they didn't fully get 50 hertz out of the circuit. And, um, but uh, this is just a side effect. It has nothing to do with the distortion measurement. Anyway, you can see here the second fundamental is at minus 47 dB and the third fundamental at 3 kilohertz is even higher at minus 40 dB. This line alone would give 1% uh, of distortion and uh, the software has the nice feature that it actually calculates the total harmonic distortion. So it squares up all the, f the harmonics, uh, adds them and then takes the, the square root uh, out of the value. That's the correct way how to do it and I can even show you here. Uh, you can set how, how many harmonics up to the ninth harmonics if you want to uh, shall be added uh, up and uh, then it displays, which you probably can only re read if you watch this video in full HD. Here down on the left you can see uh, minus 39.7 dB or 1.05% at 999 Hz or round it up to 1 kHz. So we're already down at the 1% level. But the data sheet of the XR2206 says you can get it down to around 0.7 or 0.5% distortion. So now, while watching the, the FFT spectrum, let's try to optimize. First, I'm now turning the main distortion adjustment trimmer and um, from memory I think this changes mainly the third harmonics so watch here the third harmonics at 3 kilohertz if it if we can get it lower and even the first touch brought it down to minus 57 dB and I don't think that I can get it any yeah now it's rising up again so that was a lucky turn of the screwdriver. Let's see if I can get it back down. Yeah, that was about minus 57 dB. And now I'm changing to the symmetry trim, trim pot. And now watch the second harmonic. I know this <laughs> because I've, I've done this already three times before because my, uh, my camera, camera had uh, had a bug and uh, the first two times I tried this uh, the recording at the end didn't work. So let me get <laughs> the screwdriver into the trimmer. So now let's try to get the second harmonic down. No, it gets higher in that direction. But here we can get it down, down still a little bit down and now it's already rising again so back so this is near optimum let's get back to the main trimmer for the main adjustment if we still get get it any better of course a 10 turn trim pot would be much easier um, no it gets up again I think this is already, yeah, this was already the optimum value. Let's try to get it back. Whoops, wrong direction. So I think this is the best we can get. And now even the fifth harmonic at five kilohertz is the dominating harmonic. And let's see, uh, it says now 0.53%. So we have uh, gotten a factor of two better in the distortion adjustment. And I think this is quite nice. Today it's really easy um, with any audio analyzer software, with any PC audio sound card, uh, you can much easier minimize the distortion. So. Uh, 
that was it for today. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. And until next time, bye from Roger, bye from Kanka Labs.